In Navajo culture, a skinwalker is an evil witch that has the ability to turn into an animal for short periods of time. Tonight's stories will focus on the people who have had the misfortune of encountering these creatures face to face. Be sure to drop by every Thursday at 5 p.m. Central for new content. And if you like these stories and want to hear more, click on the end screen or on the link to the playlist in the first pinned comment below. The great gods of YouTube will give you a cookie if you do. Really. But for now, sit back, relax, let me lead the way. And let's get scared. Together. 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 I come from a small town in northern Arizona, near Navajo reservations. My high school was so small, just 80 students, that we had to travel south five to ten hours one way just to play another high school in any sport. That meant we did a lot of traveling through Navajo reservation roads. Since we drove so far, we usually stayed overnight at hotels, then drove home in the morning. But one time, the school ran out of money in the budget for hotels, so we had to drive there and back in the same day, taking those reservation roads at night. So, driving home after the game, everyone was asleep, except the driver and me. Around two in the morning, we drove across the reservation border. I noticed that the bus driver sped up and was doing about 85 miles an hour. I thought that was a little weird, because this guy never sped in all the years I'd been driving with him. But then again, I'd never driven with him through reservation territory at night. For some reason, I just couldn't fall asleep like the rest of them, so I sat at the back of the bus, staring out the window at the desert landscape that was lit up by the full moon. Suddenly, I could see a figure running towards the bus at an odd angle, then running right next to it and keeping up with the bus at 85 miles per hour. As it got closer, I saw that it looked human, only the face was painted half black and half white, and the eyes were glowing red. My immediate thought? Holy crap, it's a skinwalker! It kept pace with the bus, jumping over sagebrush and rocks, anything that was in its path, all the while staring directly into my eyes. After I made eye contact with this thing, I could not look away. And I mean it. I physically could not look away. It was like something was holding my head and eyes in place. The skinwalker just smiled at me. It was an inhuman smile that went ear to ear, showing crooked yellow pointed teeth. I felt like I was going to throw up. Then it dropped down on all fours, still keeping pace with the bus and still staring at me. I swear to you, I could see its bones crack and reform and hair begin appearing all over its body. And in a matter of seconds, it became a coyote and ran back into the desert out of view. As soon as it was gone, I ran to the bathroom on the bus and I started throwing up a mixture of my dinner and blood. I didn't want to tell anyone for fear that they would think I was crazy. But I confided in my Navajo friend. She told me that I needed to see a chief and get a blessing. So the next day, in the school parking lot, the chief came up to me, mumbled something in the Navajo tongue while waving a feathered scepter-like thing at me. Then he turned around, got in his truck, and drove away. I haven't seen another skinwalker since that day, and that might be due to the fact that I moved away from that town. And if I ever have to drive that way again, I take the far way around. I lived in Montana for a short while, on an Indian reservation. I moved there to attend a Job Corps training session to become a diesel mechanic in their vocational school. I lived in their dormitories while I was there, and during orientation, the two things they stressed the most were, don't go out at night for your own safety, and 
don't disrespect the land. My roommate Sean and I thought they were just being strict with us. But then we noticed that the natives didn't go out after dark unless they stuck to the lighted areas. After I had been there for a few months, I started dating a native girl. We used to go and sit by the lake, but she'd never stay out past sunset. She'd freak out and we'd have to go back home. One day, Sean, my girlfriend, and I were down by the lake talking when she looked to our left and saw a deer standing unusually close to us, kind of like it hadn't even noticed us. She freaked out and started chanting something in her native language. Then she said, Run! and bolted off, leaving Sean and me just standing there, confused. There was something about that deer. It stared at us as if it were looking through to our very souls. We both started feeling very uneasy, and we tried to scare it off, but it would not move. Freaked out and realizing that the sun was setting, we started quickly walking back to the Job Corps dormitory with the deer following us, maybe 10 feet behind. We started walking even faster. Then we saw a raven sitting on a fence post not four feet away from the trail. It cawed just once, and the next thing we knew, the deer was gone, just disappeared. We should have seen it leave, right? But no, it simply vanished. We still had about a mile to go before getting to the dormitory, when it became so foggy we couldn't see more than a few feet ahead of us. Then we smelled what seemed to be rotting meat or a dead animal. Off to our left, we heard what sounded like tearing noises, like an animal was tearing flesh off of something. We cautiously moved forward and peered through the fog and saw what looked like a tall, disfigured man eating a deer carcass, raw. Sean was so startled, he stumbled backwards and tripped, making enough noise that he caught this thing's attention. It stopped and looked up, as if listening. Then, it stood up. It had freakishly long arms and legs, and a jaw that looked like it was unhinged. The first thing that came to mind was the ice cream man from the movie Legion. He was wearing no clothes, and when he turned his head our way, he smiled an unnaturally wide smile and waved at us. Pure terror. We took off and ran as fast as we could, and we heard this thing running after us. When we got close enough to the dormitory, we started screaming for help, and some of the staff came outside. We both cried in our instructor's arms for a good long while, totally shaken. When we calmed down, they told us that they saw a tall, skinny man chasing us, then saw it run off into the darkness when we approached the dorm and yelled for help. My girlfriend was there, too. Thanks for ditching us. They all knew what we saw. The locals just call it him, a skinwalker. My father owns a small delivery service that operates out of Farmington, New Mexico. One day, he was called to make a delivery out to Window Rock, Arizona, on a Navajo reservation about two hours away. Dad's Navajo friend, Travis, mentioned that he had family out there that he hadn't seen in ages, so Dad suggested he come along with them. I was about six or seven years old at the time, and it was summertime, so Dad decided that we would all go down together. He could do his delivery while Travis saw his family, and then we could go check out the window rock, a large rock base that has a hole in it that goes all the way through to the other side. Pretty cool. We had to drive down separately since my dad's truck was loaded with freight. We also brought along some walkie-talkies so we could communicate with one another in the trucks. This was long before cell phones. We spent our time at Window Rock, and things were pretty uneventful. We started heading home along the old highway, with my dad and I driving in front, and Travis driving behind us. 
I honestly don't remember much about the Window Rock trip, but this next part, I will never forget. We were somewhere on the highway between Window Rock and Gallup, New Mexico. It had just rained earlier in the day, and the roads were kind of slick, so we were taking it pretty slow. On the left side of the highway, there was nothing but sandstone cliffs, and on the right, there was a huge field separated from the road by a small barbed wire fence. When we drove to the top of the hill and looked down to the bottom, we saw what appeared to be a very large dog sitting back on its haunches in the middle of the road, facing the cliffs. My dad called over the radio. Hey, Travis, do you see that big-ass dog? Travis started frantically yelling back over the radio. That's not a dog. Speed up. Speed up and hit it. Hit it now! He sounded almost hysterical. He kept saying, hit it. You have to hit it. So my dad sped up, and as we got a bit closer, I could see it a little more clearly. It was covered in brown, wiry, matted hair that appeared to have dried blood all over it. It was still facing the cliffs, but the moment our headlights hit it, it turned to look at us, and it had a human face. I don't know how else to describe it, other than a mix between a bear's face and a human face. It was twisted and distorted, and it almost looked like it was in pain. As we drew even closer, we saw that this thing was huge. Even sitting down, it was as tall as the hood of the truck. We were literally inches away from hitting it when it let out a scream that sounded like a mix between an animal and a human with water in its lungs. Then in one leap, it went from the road all the way back to the fence. And in one more leap, it was gone from sight. Travis came over the radio again, screaming, Keep driving! Keep driving! We have to get out of here fast! Go faster! He kept repeating that last part over and over about getting out of there fast. Pretty soon, we were speeding like crazy. And just as we got to the outskirts of Gallup, we got pulled over by a cop. Travis pulled his truck over too, even though he wasn't told to. This naturally made the cop, a Navajo man himself, a little nervous. He asked Travis why he felt the need to pull over as well. Travis said, We just saw a skinwalker a few miles back, and it's been following us. The officer turned white stammered something about giving us a verbal warning, then ran back to his car and took off. We did the same. We didn't see anything else that night, but after that, Travis wouldn't let us leave home without taking some kind of Navajo totem with us to ward off any further encounters. I spent a lot of time in Colorado by the Four Corners near Navajo and Ute Indian Reservations. In the town of Cortez, there's a place called Skinwalker Lane that's well known to the locals. It's an old dirt road just outside of the reservation, and it leads to an abandoned cabin. This cabin is decades old and is said to have been unlawfully built on Indian burial ground by a white man. The story goes, a white family lived there and disappeared mysteriously, but their spirits are said to linger on in that cabin. As dumb teenagers, my cousins and I thought the whole story was a hoax, so we wanted to go to Skinwalker Lane and check it out for ourselves. We all piled into a car and drove out to Skinwalker Lane at 11 p.m. when it was pitch black. The only light came from the moon and the stars, but you could still see the peaks of Sleeping Ute Mountain in the distance and see the trees lining the road on either side of Skinwalker Lane. As we slowly drove down the road, we saw deer, in groups of two and three, poking their heads out of the trees as we passed, just staring at us. I thought it was especially weird, because deer are usually pretty jumpy creatures. After driving about a mile and a half up the road, 
we finally got to a clearing which opened out into a big field. At the other end of the field, you could see the old cabin. By that point, we were really creeped out, but reluctantly continued to drive until we got about 150 feet from the cabin. It was dark inside, but you could see that the wood was rotting, and there were weird carvings all over it like some sort of tribal symbols. We decided to just sit in the car and look at the cabin for a while to see if anything happened. But truthfully, we were just too scared to get out and walk up to it. As we sat there, we heard a shrill, ear-piercing howl out of nowhere. It was a long howl that started out animalistic, but by the time it ended, it sounded like a man screaming. Off to the left, we saw something on two feet run behind the cabin. Then on the right, we saw an enormous coyote, much larger than a normal one. The coyote just stood there and stared us down, eyes glowing blood red. We freaked out and drove away as fast as we could. I will always believe in skinwalkers after that night. This morning I left the house at 4.45 a.m. to be exact. I had an early appointment and I had to drive about three hours to get to my destination. I usually take the main roads, but I decided to take the back roads going through the Indian Reservation. That road would shave a good 45 minutes off my drive time, and I would have plenty of time to get to my appointment. I've heard stories about skinwalkers on reservations, but I never thought I would see one. But this morning, I'm sure I saw one. I was the only car on the road going 60 miles an hour when I came across a herd of horses. I slowed down, thinking one might cross my path and cause a car accident. Suddenly, something caught my attention. It was a shadowy figure moving right next to my car. I turned to look, and I saw the face of an old woman running alongside the car at 60 miles an hour. Her face was gaunt and painted white with pitch black sunken eyes. She was evil and ugly looking. I turned away, screamed, and stepped on the gas pedal. I was in full panic mode and refused to look back to see that face again. I wanted to cry and pull over to compose myself, but I didn't dare stop on that road. I finally made it back to the main road and calmed down because there were other cars around me. I'll never take that road again. I have no idea what I saw, but I'm guessing it was a skinwalker. I was a kid when this happened. My uncle and I were out one night. We were driving back home to my grandma's on a dirt road doing 30 miles an hour when I had an awful sense of being watched. I was about to turn and look out the window when my uncle quickly shouted, Don't! I completely froze. My heart was beating hard. Then it skipped a beat when I heard a tap, tap, tap on my window. My uncle sped up and he was praying out loud in our native language. I didn't know what was going on, and I thought it was over, until our truck suddenly dipped down, as if some heavy weight were on top of the roof. My uncle said, Look at me. Don't turn away. Just look at me. Then I heard it again. Tap, tap, tap. But this time from the window behind me. It was getting hard for me to breathe, and I wanted to cry. A minute or two passed, and the truck dipped down again. Then my uncle looked around and sighed. It was finally over. He looked at me and said, Your father will have to say some prayers over us when we get home, so that the evil forgets our faces. That was my encounter with a skinwalker.
This was late November in the early 80s. My sister's car broke down one night, and my dad went to get her. It was just past 10 p.m. and pitch black. As they drove back home, they had to pass by a heavily wooded area. Out of nowhere, they heard an inhuman scream. It was so loud, they heard it over the engine and the radio. Dad slammed on the brakes, and they both looked around, wondering what it was. Suddenly, a six-foot-tall coyote, walking on two legs, appeared on the side of the road and walked right in front of the car. And once it passed, that same inhuman scream was heard, but this time, ten times louder. Dad put his foot on the accelerator and got the heck out of there. They never saw it again. Do you believe in the existence of skinwalkers? They're just too interesting not to exist in this world. Thank you so much for listening tonight and for being part of my family of darkness. I appreciate each and every one of you. Now click on the screen above to listen to more stories like this so you can stay scared until we meet again, my friends. <laughs>